Hi, I'm Karina Smash Cardella. I graduated from Indiana University in 2015, where I was a cabin counselor and unit leader for all four years of college. And last year, 2019, I was a camp advisor at University of Richmond. And I'm Elena Springs Cardella, her sister. Uh, I am the co-director at Camp Kesem at Marquette University, and I graduated this spring. We are here on our front deck to teach you about backyard birding. Now, there's a type of bird watching or birding where people go to all parts of the world and they try and see as many birds as possible and they really have really fancy binoculars and they know all the names and the calls of birds and they're super competitive about it. But there's a different kind of birding, I like to call it backyard birding or slow birding, that anybody can do from the comfort of their backyard or even a kitchen window without any special tools or bird experience at all. And that's the type of birding we're going to talk about today. First, we have some optional materials you can use. You don't need them, but they'll be useful, especially if you want to take your bird spotting skills to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds silly, but toilet paper tubes can help you single your vision on one specific thing and allow you to focus. So if you've got some extra toilet paper tubes lying around and some glue, you can just stick them together and they look like binoculars. Now, I'm not a very experienced birder, but I'm very lucky to have a pair of binoculars that my dad gave me. Um, but we only have one pair. So Sprinks is going to use the tubes, and I might use the binoculars. It depends if we see something or not. Um, so Sprinks made a pair of the cardboard tubes already. Beautiful. We used a little bit of glue, just stuck them together. Super easy. So if you want to take a second and make those, you can pause the video, make them, and then come right back to us. Also, if you don't have tubes laying around, you can use your hands like this. Or you can just look. You really don't need them, but they're nice to have. We'll tell you about the optional, the other optional video, the other optional material you'll need later on in this video. So Springs and I, we live in southeastern Wisconsin where summer is very short, but because of that, many birds migrate here to take advantage of our lush green forests, as you can see behind us, um, beautiful sunny prairies and almost 13,000 lakes. So the birds we see here might be different than the ones you see if you're in a different state, but there are some birds like robins and pigeons that pretty much hang out anywhere. But it doesn't matter if the birds we see are like the ones you see or not. We're not experts and you don't have to be either to enjoy birds. Now, I want you to think about the last time you had a bird experience and you kind of stopped and noticed a bird. Maybe it was a bright red bird in your backyard in the snow or a pigeon picking at some crumbs at a picnic or even a lazy seagull in the air on a hot day at the beach or, I mean, they hang out at parking lots a lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just think about it for a minute. Um, while you think, Sprinks, what was the last time you had a bird experience? Well, I was sitting out in our backyard and we have a lake on our in our backyard and I was sitting there in a big bird with super big wings and super long legs swooped down and landed on the dock and I had no idea what it was. You know what it might have been? Well, I know a little bit about birds and we are very lucky that a lot of water birds hang out. So it probably was a crane or a heron of some kind. Yeah, it was pretty big. Yeah. And we'll show you later on how to figure out if you can describe a bird what kind it is. Uh, my most recent bird experience, I took our dog hiking. She's right here if you want to say hi. Malika, she says hi, um, and I didn't have my binoculars because they're kind of heavy, and all of a sudden out of nowhere I saw this bright red bird, like it was like firecracker or fire truck red, super bright, and it had black wings, and it was kind of just chilling, and I was really close to it, it was really cool, I didn't even need my binoculars to see its little eyes and its little legs, and it would land on a, it would land on a branch, and then it would swoop around and then land again. And that kind of behavior is very common of certain kinds of birds that like to eat bugs. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and that was a really, really special experience for me. So right now, if you're not outside or near a window, go to a quiet outdoor spot where um, you might be able to look, out bird, look at birds or even outside your window, really. Um, so if you're not there now, go ahead, pause the video and bring us with you. We'll wait. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you um, have gone to your spot, we're going to talk to you guys about some of the basics of bird watching. The first thing is to slow down. If you're sitting, notice the way the chair feels on the back of your legs. And maybe if you're outside and there's a little breeze, kind of feel it on your arms and your legs. It just rained here. So our chairs are a little wet. Mm -hmm. It's a little humid. Just a little bit, but that's okay. Yeah, but there's a nice breeze. It's very, it's very mild. 
and you can kind of hear the, the wind in the trees. And we live near a highway, so you can probably hear some highway sounds, but that's okay. It's not a big deal. And just kind of notice how your body's feeling. If your shoulders are hunched, kind of let them down. If your jaw's clenched, kind of let that go. And just kind of use this as a moment to relax and be outside and enjoy nature. Bird watching isn't just about looking for birds. It's about opening your senses and bringing your mind to the present. It's almost like meditating. So if you don't have a backyard and you live in a building with a lot of other people, just open a window. Even if you're up high, you'd be surprised how many birds there are. Did you know that the fastest bird in the world, in the world, the peregrine falcon, likes to roost and hunt in New York City? Like downtown New York City, you might see the fastest bird in the world. Wow. Right around skyscrapers. So it really doesn't matter where you are. I bet you can find a bird or two hanging out nearby. My favorite time to bird is in the morning. I like to take a cup of coffee or tea outside and kind of listen and slow down while my brain isn't awake yet. And then that way I can kind of focus on what I'm seeing and being in the moment right before my brain kind of focuses on all the things I have to do. I look for movement in the trees and I see birds swooping from branches or gathering sticks or even hunting bugs or worms. Now sometimes when you're birding, you might not see a single bird, but you might hear some. And don't worry, that's normal. One of the most important birding tools are your ears. So we're gonna do a little exercise to get your ears working. I want you guys to be quiet, like we mentioned, and kind of think how far away you can listen. So what's the furthest you can hear? I hear the highway, which is pretty far. I would say it's like, what, a mile away? Yeah, I would say about that's a mile. good. Hmm. I hear Something the trees pretty far. And can you listen close? Like, what's the closest sounds you can hear? I can hear our dog licking her fur right near me, maybe a foot away. And I can hear some, some of the bushes rustling pretty nearby. So take some time and kind of do this for yourself. What can you hear far away? What can you hear close? Can you hear your neighbor's, clo can you hear your neighbor's house? Um, I definitely, before, maybe not so much now, but I heard there is air conditioning running. That's very common to hear. And what about beyond your neighbor's house? Like we said before, the trees are beyond our neighbor's house, so I can hear that pretty well. And what about above you? We're up high, but you might be down low where the trees are above you. Can you hear things above you? Um, maybe in front of you. We're facing a wall, so maybe behind us would be better. I can definitely hear behind us. Mm -hmm. So just take a moment and kind of see where the sounds are. Are they coming from your left, from your right, from above, from below? And just take some time. And it doesn't have to be bird sounds yet. Just pay attention to the sounds around you. Now, I want to tell a quick story. Um, one of my friends from college is a really good birder, and she actually worked professionally identifying birds in the forest in Indiana for a summer. And she identified the birds just from their calls and songs. She didn't even look for the birds. She just sat down and wrote down what she was hearing. So you can really do a lot of great birding just by using your ears. She is also very uh, advanced because she can tell based on a bird call whether or not the bird's looking for a mate or warning other birds about nearby predators. Springs and I, we can't tell that, mm -mm. but that's not a big deal. Um, we can still kind of tell the differences between like a chirpy buzz or a chirpy call or a buzzy call or certain songs. So if you're a beginner like us, I'm gonna give you a couple bird sound genres to listen to when you're listening. The first one is a very clear sound. Um, an example of this, which you might not know this bird, that's okay. It's a black capped chickadee. And they're very common across the Eastern US. So if you live anywhere from like Maine to Missouri to Texas, you'll probably be able to hear them. Their call sounds like, I think it sounds like cheeseburger, but other people think it sounds like, hey, sweetie. Um, I'm gonna play it for you on my phone really quick so you can hear what it sounds like in real life not just the onomatopoeia that we have. So, I hear a truck. So that's what it sounds like. Hopefully that sound went through. I guess if we'll not, see. you can Google it. It's a very common bird. But you can also whistle it. It's so such a clear call or song, you can like whistle it. So like, super clear. Another genre of bird calls and songs um, is like a trill. So if you go like springs, that's what it's going to sound like. Um, 
And finally, another group of bird songs that you'll be able to hear is like a buzz, almost like an insect. Um, there's a truck backing up. That's another thing you can observe. We hear it. Yes. Some birds have all three of these sounds in one song or call, which is really cool. They might start with a clear note and end with a buzzy ending. Um, but some of them just have one or two. So once these trucks go by, it's a little busy on our road, which is normally it's not this busy. It's usually pretty quiet. Yeah. We're going to see if we can't hear some birds. So we're going to take a moment and kind of listen. What do you, do you hear anything, Sprites? Sorry, my binoculars. That's found. okay. We don't need our binoculars we don't need them, right now. But I don't want them to get wet. I Ooh. hear something kind of to our right. I hear something over there, and it's like a... I also heard one that's kind of like a cackle. It was like... <laughs> I heard that one, too. <laughs> oh, I actually saw birds. That's, we're not even to that step yet. Um, oh, there's one ooh, that's... That was like... It was like a like a very sing-songy. It was mm -hmm. like... Doo -loop, doo -loop. I see another bird. Maybe a chirpy one. Oh, that was that like... Was... That was that cackle -y one again. <laughs> Honestly... <laughs> I think that bird watching almost should be bird listening. There's a lot of birds you can hear that you might not be able to see. I think this we can hear like there's the cackly one, there's the really chirpy one, there's, there's the, the sing songy song. one over there. I th that's at least four different kinds of birds right there. Do we know what they are? Heck no. We're but calling we it we're calling it the sing songy the bird. The sing songy bird <laughs> and the cackly bird. But as long as we're taking time to listen and appreciate them, that's all that matters. So if you're lucky and patient, or like us, and you happen to see some swoop by, you might be able to see them, and they might come into view. So, to kind of get a sense of what you should look for um, when observing a bird on the branch, or on the ground, or in the sky, it's best to think of yourself as an investigator. Don't jump to a conclusion of what kind of birds you're seeing. You know, maybe you might be familiar with robins and crows, so everything's going to look like a robin or crow. So, start with gathering clues. Is the bird larger or smaller than a crow? Because a lot of us know what crows look like, so that's a good reference point. Um, other things you can pay attention to are the color. And don't just think of it as red, orange, yellow, blue, green. Don't just stick to the basic colors. Think about the shades and have fun when describing them. There's a lot of birds that are really beautiful colors, like a deep emerald green or a, like a red, like a big red ruby. Um, you know, they might be a dusty brown or ruddy or an emerald green or aquamarine. They're so colorful. It's amazing. So don't just limit yourself to orange. Um, and you aren't just looking for the color to identify the species. Um, as a, like an investigator, there are some small clues about the colors that are going to tell you more than you think. For example, a lot of male birds are more colorful than females. Um, and this time of year, a lot of males um, and females are pairing off to have babies. So if you're lucky, you might see a male and female together, and they might not look the same. Um, for example, house finches, the male is a really pretty, like, I would say it's almost a periwinkle color from like the head to the chest, and then he's brown. And the female is very drab. She's brown and a little mottled, um, and she's also a little smaller. But you might see them together, and they're two of the same kind of bird. And another fun thing about birds is males, for example, when they've just, when they've hatched about a year ago, they'll be splotchy because they start out as drab colors so they blend in as babies, but then the males turn bright. So they might have some splotchy patches and some brown patches, um, and that means that you're seeing a juvenile bird, which is cool, and they're still growing into adult. So they're kind of like a teenager. They might look a little bit awkward, but they're getting there. Some other things to look for when you're looking at birds is the bill. Is it long? Is it short? Is it sharp? Is it really blunt? Um, that can tell you a lot about what the bird eats, what the bird does, um, and you might not know what kind it is based off of the bill, but it's kind of cool to look at those things. Um, another thing to look at is the legs. If it's got really long legs, like the water bird Elena saw, that can tell you a lot about what it does. Um, Smash, I think you need to go hug a tree. Why? <gasps> I called her Elena. I'm so sorry. I'm Springs. Springs. <laughs> She's my sister. It's very hard. Um, I'll hug a tree later. Well, since you're a counselor at CK Marquette, we eat baby foods, so you might be having a snack later. Well, we just hug trees, so, <laughs> and Smash is very good at hugging trees. Um, so, this is where your toilet paper tubes are going to come in handy. It's going to help you zero in on the birds and look for those details. Um, it really does help you focus your attention. Springs thinks it doesn't because they're glued together. Here, Springs. I think... 
for me, they're but a little it does. close. It but does still help. It really does. After using them, I, I put them to my face right when I made them, and I was like, they're too close together. This isn't going to work. And then I went outside, and I looked at the trees, and I could see, like, the leaf on the tree, which normally everything blends together. Mm-hmm. So I was doubtful, but I gave it a shot. This is all you need. Yep. Yep. You don't even need fancy binoculars. Um, And so while you're looking and taking time to look, just keep asking yourself questions about what you're seeing. And if you want to, you can draw a picture or describe what you're seeing by writing it down. But I don't even do that. I kind of just admire and observe them. So now we're going to take some time um, and see if we can't observe any birds. So if you want, you can watch us or you can pause the video and take time to do it as well. Or you can do it once you're done watching this. It's kind of just a tutorial so you can take time and do it later. Okay, Springs. Let's see. I hear birds. I know. I hear them again. So we might need to kind of take time and reestablish if we can still hear them. Ooh. I hear a chirpy one. I saw one. It was really far away, though. Oh, there goes another one. They're really little. Yeah, those are little. I think those are those three ones that we saw before, though. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, there's one. It's far away. And like I said, this isn't going to happen right away. I mean, we can hear tons of birds, but we can't see them. So if you see them, just think of it as an added bonus. I'm going to look over here for a minute and see. The really cackly one that we heard before, I don't see at all. Or oh, there's one. Here. Oh, oh, he came really close. Oh, he flew. Yeah, he went far away. They all got places to be. Ooh, I heard a more buzzy one. I also feel like a really, it's like a creaky, it kind of sounds like if you're opening a creaky door really fast. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I hear the cackling one now. He's kind of over here now. Hi. What does that one sound like, too? <laughs> I don't do my bird noises very well, but no, I have fun with it. I think that it. they're very good. Ooh, oh, those are really far away. Oh, oh. Those are those same three birds keep coming back. I wonder if those three birds are a mom and a dad and a baby. Oh. Although, I think it's a little early for babies, but it depends. Some birds nest really early in the summer. Ducks do. Mm hmm. They do. Where's that guy go? See where he landed? Yep, he was over there. Oh, he's gone. I might stand up. Oh, Ooh, there's one. There's one. Okay, well, I only got a quick view of him. There's some on that tree far, far away over there. That really dead one. Oh, yeah. Here, wait. Let me look. Oh, the three oh. of them. Oh, okay. one's sitting right on that oh, big branch. Do you see him? You can use my binoculars because it's kind of far away if you want. There's two different kinds. Do you see? Oh, oh the two little ones flew did away. Did you happen to see what color it was? No, they were leaving just okay, as I well, saw Well, I saw what color it was what because color? I was really quick. It was yellow, and it had black wings. And then the one that's, oh, he flew away too. He was very puffy, and he had a really skinny beak. Mm -hmm. I have an idea of what it could be, but we'll talk about that later. So if you see some birds like we did, I mean, we were only looking for like five minutes. And if you take a lot longer and you're really quiet and observant, you can definitely see a lot more. Um, but we don't want to sit here and have you guys watch us watch birds because... That sounds boring. So <laughs> take your time, um, you know, describe the birds, you know, see if you can't grab like glimpses of color. It might be a little hard and frustrating at first, but just, you know, think of it as a special moment if you get to see the bird. And if you do see them and you want to take it a step further and not only watch birds, but identify them as well, there are a lot of really good tools for beginners like us. This is the last optional material you can use. If you have a smartphone or a computer, um, and you want to up your bird watching game, there are two really good apps. 
The first one is called eBird and it's from Cornell University. Um, the other one is called Audubon, and that's from the National Audubon Society, and these are both fantastic organizations. Um, both of the apps are really cool, because say, for example, that yellow bird we saw. It's a very small bird, so you go through, and there's a, a bunch of options that you can pick. The first one is the size of the bird, and it kind of does it like, is it bigger or smaller than a crow? Is it as big as a goose? Is it small like a swallow? Um, so that one was small like a swallow, so we would check that, and then the colors, it was black and yellow, and then it was perched in a tree. So you put those things, um, and then finally, it'll sometimes automatically have your location, but if not, you plug in your location and the time of year, um, and like magic, it's going to spit out a list of birds. Um, let's do it right now. What do you think, Sprinks? Let's yeah. see if I was, uh, what kind of bird that was. So That's here I am, I'm clicking on the Audubon app. And you can click identify a bird. So what size was it? Let's see. We've got the size of a sparrow, the size of a robin, a crow, a mallard, and a heron. I would say it was about the size of a sparrow. Yeah. It was little. Yeah. And then the next color, so it was black and yellow. And type. So, yeah, the type is, like, what kind of bird. And if you don't know what hawks or perching or owls are, you can skip that one. I tend to skip it a lot. And then the activity. So it was... It was perched. Do we have that? But it was also flying. So we'll do we'll do flying. And then you can click the habitat, but sometimes it's already gonna populate. Like I can see what it is right now. It is American goldfinch. That's what kind of came up. It doesn't really look like any of these other guys. Because he was yellow. His whole body was yellow. And there we have it. A goldfinch. An American goldfinch. And then it's cool because you can see the description, you can play the songs and calls, all sorts of cool stuff. But you still don't need this app if you don't want to use it and you just want to sit outside and observe little guys flittering around. That's cool too. The cool thing about these apps as well is they have other things where you can log. Say you saw the goldfinch, you can log it in the app. Um, and then it's going to get sent to a bird database with Cornell University or the Audubon Society, and it helps scientists track bird populations. And this is called citizen science. Um, so yeah, just by clicking on an app and saying you saw a yellow bird, you can become a scientist. So look at that. Y'all are scientists now. Pretty stinking cool. Um, some other cool things um, that you can go online and look for. eBird has something called Nest Watch. So say there's a nest in like right above your garage or under your deck and you've kind of been watching it and keeping an eye. You can go and tell the website about it. And last year, citizen scientists just like you watched between 20, 27 and 28,000 nests. Um, and this is really valuable information, um, especially because our outdoor spaces are changing a lot. And so we want to make sure that, you know, birds are going to be okay. Um, also, if you live in a more urban area, Celebrate Urban Birds is another fantastic resource. You can just Google it, Celebrate Urban Birds. It's also with Cornell University, um, and you can pick a spot. Usually they have you pick about half of a basketball court, and then you, re you observe common birds. Pigeons, robins, crows, all those birds that you see all over the place. Um, and then the key is, too, if you see a bird and you get really excited, don't just immediately pick up your computer or your phone to write it down. Watch the bird, observe what it's doing. Is it flying away? Is it looking for insects? Keep an eye on it until it's gone. Then make a note and when it's gone, you can you know, record those things. Um, and citizen science is really cool because it collects data in a really rigorous way and scientists can use it. But a lot of the times that's just the side benefit. For me, it's about breaking out of my routine and showing us something that's wonderful and powerful right in front of our eyes. And if we can just stop looking at our phones and our computers and our screens for just a second, um, you know, bird watching helps you do that. It's really cool. And that's one of the reasons why birds, and especially common birds, are so perfect. They're a miracle that's right in front of us. And a lot of times you don't pay attention to the crows and the robins hopping around. And another really cool thing about birds is if you see a warbler or a house finch or any kind of bird, a lot of times it's a link to a tropical rainforest. In Ecuador or Brazil or Panama, so many birds migrate from all over the world to eat those stinking mosquitoes that are biting you and the worms that are hanging out in your yard in Pennsylvania or Indiana. 
They came all the way here just to munch on those things. Or they might be using your yard as a stopping point as they migrate all the way to Canada. It's pretty amazing to me. Someone could see a bird in South America and just a few weeks later, it could be in your backyard in Connecticut or Wisconsin. They truly are stitching the world together with their colors. Oh, it's really nice. So cute. I love that. Yeah. So whether you decide to do citizen science while you watch your birds or just do it for fun so you can take a minute to unplug and connect with nature, there truly is something amazing about them. Sprinks and I want to thank you for watching. And we hope you can take some time out of your crazy day to poke your head out the window or step into your backyard and listen for some, um, some feathered friends. We also want to thank the National Audubon Society and the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Ornithology is just a fancy word for the study of birds. For the great resources that provide bird ID and citizen science. Finally, we'd like to thank that podcast Outside In from New Hampshire Public Radio for giving us the inspiration to bring our love of casual backyard birding to anyone with a window. If you watch this bird and are birding with your toilet paper binoculars or just with your ears, take a picture and tag Camp Kesem on social media. And finally, check back for more activities for you to do from your home. Thanks so much and happy birding. Bye-bye.